I would like to make a small footnote about the young history of database systems. How did it all start? Well, a long time ago, people programmed in a very weird programming language called COBOL. And the programs got longer and longer and more difficult to understand and to maintain. And one reason for that was these programs reinvented data managing technology all over the place. That they were reinventing the same things over and over again. So eventually people decided to separate the data managing code from everything else and put the data managing code into a separate component. That component was called the Database Management System or DBMS. This had the advantage that you wouldn't have to worry about so much anymore about the data managing parts. That was all delegated to the database management system. You only had to send a query and receive the result and that was it. So in the 60s, a number of important developments started. So one was the so-called hierarchical database management system. That was a type of system where data was basically organized as a tree. An extension to that was a navigational database management system which allowed you to organize your data in the graph structure. A disadvantage of those systems was that there was no physical data independence. This means the what and how in those systems was not very well separated. You couldn't really separate the two things. So in the 70s, Edgar Cott invented the relational model and that changed how database systems were designed. So there's a saying, Cott made relations all else is a work of man. A major effect of what Cott invented was that the what and the how could now be clearly separated. Now there was physical data independence. So in the 70s, a number of important research projects started. The most prominent one being IBM System R. That was the first commercial relational database system. Then in the 80s, the development of systems really started. A lot of money was invested, the demand for database technology was getting bigger and bigger. So IBM started its first release of its commercial product, IBM DB2, Oracle entered the market. And eventually people started thinking about a standard, how to standardize the structured query language, SQL, which we are using today. In the 90s, a number of important extensions were made to database technology. One was object relational database management systems. The reason for developing this were the object oriented programming languages, which became popular in the 90s. So people thought about how to put those objects into a database management system. And one approach was to provide extensions to the existing relational database management systems, which would then allow people to manage objects with relations as well. So this is basically a relational database management system plus some object extensions. Another variant of a system that was developed were pure object oriented database management systems. So those were systems specifically designed for object oriented programming and object data. So that was real object oriented database technology. However, these types of systems are barely used these days. So relational database systems are still widely used, even though if they're handling object data. So in the 90s also, there was a lot of development on parallel databases. So people understood that if the data got bigger and bigger, you could distribute it across many, many different machines. And then you needed a database system that would be able to manage data across the different machines. Many important developments happened at that time. Then of course the web came up, so the question was, okay, how to manage data appearing on the web as database technology. Another thing was OLAP, that means online analytical processing. These are read-only databases that are optimized for very complex analytical queries that couldn't be handled the standard database technology. So at the time, many extensions were made to SQL, but also to the database engines that had to be able to handle more complex analytical queries. Then 2000 and afterwards, XML came up. So people thought a lot about, well, why not manage all the data in XML or any other markup language? So many extensions were made, especially to the flagship products like IBM DB2 and Oracle. Data stream management was another research area. So here the idea was, 
rather than putting data into a repository and then send queries to that repository, in, in data stream management, you only have a window of the past data. So you try to connect to a stream of data and, and try to analyze that stream on the fly without putting that data first into some sort of repository. Another major development at the time were column stores. So that's a different way of organizing the data. We will revisit that many, many times throughout this lecture. So the basic idea is if, if you have a relational table, rather than storing the data row-wise, you store it column-wise as displayed here with a red line. So on the storage device, you first store Peter, then Steve, then Mike, then Narrow Street, then Max Street, Long Street, and so forth. Other important research after 2000 were main memory databases. So people understood more and more that many databases fit entirely into main memory. So previously, a lot of the major products were developed for disk-based systems. And they made certain decisions having disk-based access in mind. So that changed a lot after 2000 because people realized very often data fits entirely into main memory and then you can take different routes and you can take different decisions for different index structures for different data layouts different algorithms and so forth another important aspect were the so-called appliances so an appliance is basically a bundle of software and hardware you have it if you get a radio from a store so this is a mix of hardware and software and usually you can't change the software the software was installed and configured by the vendor and the same thing exists for databases so you can go to certain vendors and you do not only get the software you get the hardware plus the software and the software is even configured by that vendor that's a very important model that's called the appliance model yeah google of course is very important they're collecting more and more data and that's they require a lot of data uh, managing technology and they are exploring more and more in the area of structured data. So they started with inverted text search, but many of the services offered by Google now heavily rely on structured data management. Facebook, of course, they have a lot of data that needs to be handled and people looked more and more at how to manage that data effectively. So 2010 and afterwards, People started talking about cloud computing. So in cloud computing, the idea is that you offer services on the internet and the service may be something like a virtual machine. So if you need computing power, you don't have to buy a server anymore, but you go to the internet and you just rent the server for a few weeks, just as long as you need it. And it's not expensive. And then you have a machine somewhere sitting on the internet and you can compute whatever you want on that machine and that's way cheaper than buying the machine yourself sometimes it depends on the scenario but often it's cheaper so cloud computing is about this service oriented model that's now used by many many companies on the internet nosql was another term that appeared around 2010 so people tried to develop new types of database engines so the assumption was that relational database technology wouldn't work for specific situations so a separate community started the development of, of new types of data managing systems big data is another term that appeared since 2010 so this has to do with the data that's being collected nowadays is getting bigger and bigger. So you see that when, when you think about what people managed in the 70s, at that time, a megabyte of data was a huge amount of data to manage. And then the data sizes grew tremendously. So, so if we talk about big data today, we, we don't mean terabytes. We usually, if we talk about big data, we mean petabytes or exabytes or something like that. So the question in big data is really how to handle all those big data sets. There are a variety of data managing engines out there. The most prominent one probably MapReduce. So that's something proposed by people at Google. And then there was an open source variant of that that's called Hadoop MapReduce. And that's an interesting approach to handle big data sets. Analytics is a big topic in big data. Given a large 
data set, how do you analyze that meaningfully, how do you analyze that effectively and efficiently. Yeah, what also has been happening over the past years is um, that companies got acquired. So you might think, hey, relational database technology is so old, it started in the 70s, right? Yes, but there's still a lot of development going on. And you see that when you look at the startups that are in that field. So just to show you a few numbers, this is the amount of dollars spent by one company to acquire a database company that happened a few years ago. This is $1.7 billion. That's what IBM paid to acquire an teaser. There's another number, $263 million. That's the amount of money Teradata, a very well-established database company, they paid that to acquire another database company, a very young company called Estedata. There were many acquisitions like that over the past years. So HP acquired Vertica, Teradata acquired Kickfire, Ingress acquired Vectorvice, Software AG acquired RTM, EMC acquired Greenplum, Cisco acquired Truviso, and so forth. So there are all kinds of acquisitions currently going on, people buying database companies. And I think that demonstrates very well that the history of database technology, of database systems is still going on. It's a vibrant field with many exciting developments which are to be continued. And with that, I close the footnote on the young history of database systems. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website Datenbankenlernen it has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Jens Did, or you look at our website infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there!